Great. You take her through oh. Sudbury. Yep. Over to Ottawa. Yep. Then back to Montreal. Yep, Montreal. Okay, yeah. And, and then, then you then... probably came in on uh, 87 or 89. Yeah, right? right there. But they weren't freeways then, though, Chris. Salt St. Marie. No, we came through, we came down back into the country at the top of Maine. Yes. Eustis, oh, Maine. Oh, you went way but over But that there. wasn't the point I was trying to make before I was rudely <laughs> and unprofessionally interrupted. Several times. Several times. <laughs> My mic is still working. All along that route were really cool ma and pa hotels. And the old man would make sure to stop at one that had the big neon martini glass. Sure. Oh, right. cool. And yeah, they'd have yeah. a pool for the kids and the whole deal. My point being, cut to 2005, 2004, I did the circle tour of Lake Superior on a motorcycle. And some of that trip was coming back to me because uh, that's the route we took. None of those places exist anymore. No. They're all gone. Yeah. I saw one that was literally the tumbleweed cliche that it, it had been closed up and gone. My point being... Wait, left for for nothing or, or new development? Left for nothing. Mm. My point being that, A, people used to take car trips, mm-hmm. and B, the modern kid is not going to be satisfied with being thrown into a minivan and hauled through Canada, they expect to get on a plane and go to Disney World. You're right. But we could debate that because the modern kid has at his fingertips so much technology that they can just simply tune out of everything. Right. They can watch the DVDs. They can be on the Internet. They can TikTok and Twitter and do all that kid stuff. So I, I think it's you lay it on the parents. It's the parents' faults. The parents aren't willing to drive anymore. I've got a 22-year-old that is currently on a bus to New Hampshire right now. Good. <laughs> Does that beat his bank story? No, but why wouldn't he drive? Because he's from Boston. They don't. He doesn't have a car. He doesn't have a car there. That's a member of the, the Min- story. a number of Minnesota lawmakers are looking to tackle climate change from the capital with a roster of multimillion-dollar state investments. This is all your money. On Monday, the Minnesota House Climate Action Caucus proposed a package of bills to invest in electric buses and cars, solar production, energy efficiency improvements to buildings, and more. The 15-bill package totals $191.5 million in one-time funds, which legislators said would be funded with the state's budget surplus. So instead of the money you work for, which should be in some form returned to you, whether right now or in the means of a tax uh, decrease, the uh, Democrats are taking almost two hundred million of that for this uh, uh, this national hysteria and insanity called climate change. Representative Todd Lippert, DFL Northfield, uh, said the package aims to alleviate the effects of climate change. You can't; it's nature. Uh, we all depend on a healthy, stable climate, and we need to respond to climate change this session. Waiting to act threatens our future. No, it doesn't. It does not. The largest portion of the package is 85 mil, Jeez. devoted to energy efficiency improvements to homes, public schools, nursing homes, and commercial buildings. Have you? I just did, never thought I would live in a time when I saw mass insanity. Mm-hmm. And I'm not being facetious. Mass insanity. The second largest chunk would go towards transportation. Uh, Minnesota's largest air pollutant, according to Pollution Control Agency data, with funding for electric school and public transit buses, as well as electric vehicle rebates, uh, solar panels for homes. Uh, It goes on and on and on. Legislators formed the House Climate Caucus in September, and senators followed suit with their own Climate Caucus in December. Uh, we've created this proposal because Minnesotans were asking their state legislators to recognize the urgent challenges no. posed by climate change. I, I have like not asked see, mine. I would like to see the, show me the list, please. I have not asked mine. Show me mine. the list of seven people that have asked. So there's 200 <clears throat> million a year of tax money that created, <laughs> wow. helped to create a surplus will now go to uh, fighting the urgent crisis of climate change. And I love how they always 
throw in the uh, tax rebate deals with the with the solar panels or the trucks or the cars, you know. Yeah, what a great business to be in. And even with all those benefits and all those tax breaks and everything, it's still cost prohibitive for most of us. We just can't afford to put all those panels on our on our roof and then buy all those batteries. It's just it's out of reach for all of us. You know how I have always said the climate has always changed and always will. Mm-hmm. But think about that for a minute. It does so over a, over a span of time that I couldn't even measure. In other words, it doesn't change from July 1992 till now. It, the climate changes and always has, but over millennia. There's, there's no way to, uh, to point out that the climate has changed so urgently that we now face a crisis. Oh, but the floods in Jackson, Mississippi. Yeah, the, the record is 41 years ago for that. And for all we know, there was a record that preceded that by 200 years. Well, these floods in England, aren't they no. heavy down? No, no. The uh, uh, Tweaksbury uh, uh, Castle, the old Benedictine monastery that has risen and fallen in flood waters for 900 years. Well, well, these people that are living on cliffs in Lake Michigan, their houses are falling into the into the lake. Well, they shouldn't have built near the cliff. And two, uh, those lakes have been hammered by storms for 10,000 years. Uh, there's no crisis. None. This I'm always preaching to the choir. This movement has nothing to do with the environment. It has to do with the complete reinvention of the United States, which isn't even the world's most significant polluter. China puts more plastic in the ocean than we do, for right. example. Mm-hmm. You, got, you got half this world that's still going to the bathroom outside. Uh, the, the problems we face could be coronavirus and sanitation and fresh water, all things that could be that could be handled. But there is no there is no climate crisis in counting the clouds in the sky. <laughs> now we'll come back and we'll, we'll see what Bezos is up to with this. Here's a man who spends hours in hardware stores, sifting through the nuts and bolts of life. Joe Suchere. Okay, dummies, quiz time. What's a speed loader? Tell me. Go. Such, what's a speed loader? That's like a front end loader. I'll give you a hint. A magazine loader. Oh, that's right. It's for guns. It's putting those clips in there. Bang, 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 bang. Well, huh? Huh? Okay. Speed loader, John. Super fast. Care to? Care to? <laughs> I, I, not in. after Rook's thing. No, I'm not. Rivers, I'm, not Rivers, I'm not even talking to you because your family would be ashamed of whatever answer you give. A guy that can load true. a fire on very quickly. But I'm going to tell you right now, you're getting closer, Rookie. Okay. But you need to pipe, me. pipe down for a second here, <laughs> because when the owner employees of DKMags.com up in New Brighton, when they tell us they have the best magazine loader for a pistol ever made in store. And they'd love to give us a free demonstration. We should be showing up in mass. We should be getting the demo. We should be asking a whole bunch of questions, rookie style questions, and then tell them we're GLers. Because when you tell them you're a GLer at DKMags.com in New Brighton or even Monticello Pond and Gun, you get the GLer only discount, twenty nine bucks plus tax. Let me tell you, that's a dandy price. And if you spend a lot of time at the range, or maybe your current loader is a bit of a joke. Uh, that means you definitely do for another visit up to DK Mags or Monticello Pond and Gun. And don't forget about the GLer only price. You know what? Even if you don't spend any money there, tell them you're a GLer. You'll get a free, lovely parting gift. That's how cool they are. They're my number one source in the Twin Cities for all things firearms, ammunition, accessories, holders, holsters, cases, even tactical lights for flashlight nerds like Such. They have suppressors and on and on and on. An awesome part of our GL family, Monticello Pawn and Gun and DKMags.com. Jeff Bezos, Amazon's chief executive and world's richest man, said on Monday that he was committing $10 billion to address the climate crisis in a new initiative he called the Bezos Earth Fund. And Kenny has aptly renamed Jeff Bezos. He's a Bond villain. He looks like a Bond villain. (laughs) His latest presentation, he's up on stage with... Something up there on stage with him, and he's walking back and forth and preaching. It's right out of a Bond movie. He's revealing his evil plan. There's a two-hour special about him tonight on public television that I'm tempted to watch. Hmm. The rise of Jeff Bezos. We're going to have to. I would like to know more. Uh, The effort will fund scientists, activists, and non-governmental organizations 
uh, he said, uh, because climate change is the biggest threat to our planet, I want to work alongside others both both to amplify known ways and to explore new ways of fighting the devastating impact of climate change. <sighs> First of all, he's already disqualified from hectoring anyone. Well, he's got the fleet of private planes, limousines, 15 houses. Jeff Bezos, I don't care how he spends his money. He can do whatever he wants with it. I'm not a Bernie Sanders type. But I'm getting there (laughs) when I learn this. (laughs) Bezos spent more on this house in Beverly Hills. He just bought the the old uh, David Geffen, uh, Frank Warner estate. Oh, wow. For a hundred and sixty-five million dollars, wow! Which uh, is that's literally pocket change. A lot to of him. money. He made okay. that right now. Yeah. <laughs> so he spent a hundred and sixty-five million dollars, and according to Market Watch, that is more than Amazon has paid so far in federal corporate income tax for twenty nineteen. <laughs> Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos paid 165 mil for a palatial Beverly Hills mansion, and according to SEC filings, uh, with that sum, the Amazon uh, founder could have footed the entire 2019 tax bill his company is planning to pay this year. He may have $3 million left over. Bezos purchased the Warner Estate, originally designed in the 30s. It's really a neat house. They just paid $90 million too, for some more land in Beverly Hills. Uh, on and on. Again, I don't care how he pays. Uh, I don't care w- where he lives or what he does with his money. You just don't get to lecture me about what you call a climate crisis, you bond villain. Mm. Amazon owes more than a billion in federal taxes for 2019. The online retail pioneer so far has paid $162 million on the 2019 bill, with the remaining $914 million owed in 2019 federal income taxes. Uh, they won't. Uh, an Amazon rep will not comment on Bezos' property purchase or the company's tax rates, but referred to a previous company statement on Amazon's tax bill. We follow all applicable federal and state tax laws, and our U.S. taxes are a reflection of our continued investments. Yeah, but you're still paying less per capita than everybody in this room, and that kind of rubs me the wrong way. Well, Such, don't you have an accountant? I have an accountant. My accountant for me does everything possible in order for me to pay the least amount of taxes. Yeah, me too. It's what makes this country great. Now right. I still pay more than, more taxes than <laughs> I can afford, but I, I don't. I'm not getting your beef with him and, and his taxes because because at a certain point. It is unreasonable to expect on a per capita basis that a corporation like Amazon would pay fewer taxes than anyone in this room on a per capita basis when you factor in the percentages. Well, you are playing right into their, the other side. I guess I am. I guess I am. But let me stick then with my the point I'm more uh, solidly on in a foundation. You don't get to tell me about the climate crisis no, with the right. life you live. Right. You just don't get to. Yeah. There is no crisis with the life you live. It's really become evident that uh, it's it's the climate crisis is really built for snobs. It's really built for those who want to look down on the rest of us, like like uh, uh, Bloomberg, and say you peons are going to r- ride the bus. I I'm taking my helicopter to one of my homes. I don't know where. I might go to Bermuda this weekend. I might go to Colorado. I might go to one of my New York penthouses. I don't know which, and that's all fine. Spend the money any way you want, but shut the hell up. Yeah. You've got no business telling me how to live. Yes. Um, it was $10 <laughs> billion f- for climate crisis, right? Yes, yeah. in, in grants, yeah. So if that money didn't go towards the climate crisis, that's just $10 billion he was going to owe the government anyway? No. $10 I mean, billion. he's using that as a tax break. Oh, it's a, he'll have a positive tax consequence for it. Yeah. Brilliant. On his personal income tax. Brilliant. Sure. But that represents, I can't do the percentages, <laughs> That's point zero 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 nine of his wealth. Well, I guess my point is just that if he wasn't spending it on that, it would be going to the government anyway. Yeah. That I don't know. No, I think he's right. Yeah. Are uh, you calling it a ray of hope? What, what are you? <laughs> no, I'm just real? saying that the, the re, he's not doing this because he's seeking virtue, as the mayor would say. He's doing this because he knows the money's going to end up, you know, to the IRS anyway. Uh, okay, maybe that's the case, but uh, let me just rest on my larger point. I'll go back to South St. Marie yep, now. There you go. <laughs> South St. Marie. Uh, the larger case is he's among those who can't lecture us. Correct. Mm-hmm. Right. 
and and Bloomberg is among those who can't lecture us. Uh, All five is, feet, two of them. How is Bloomberg? I don't care how tall he is. How is Bloomberg? Uh, how are the Democrats 